In today's video, I'm going to share five tips to help you improve your proportions and sense of form in your figure drawings. Hey guys, figure drawing is totally my favorite thing to do as an artist and it's also my favorite thing to teach. So I decided to go ahead and start sharing some of what I teach here in my classes in my videos. This particular video is perfect for you if you're already doing some figure drawing and you have some experience, but you're still not happy with your proportions and you'd like to get a better sense of the form in your drawings. This will be the perfect video for you if that is the case. If you find anything valuable in this video, please give me a thumbs up or subscribe. And if there are any questions that you have about my process or something that you would like me to cover more in depth, just let me know in the comments below and I will be happy to help out. In the meantime, let's get to those five tips. We're gonna start off strong here with tip number one, which is to relate otherwise unconnected points on the figure. So I'm gonna slow it down right here and you can watch me drag my pencil over the paper because I am looking at the relationship between the armpit on our right that I'm drawing right now compared to what's happening on the shoulder on our left hand side. I also like to use angles a lot, so I'm citing some angles here, and you're gonna see that I'm gonna draw in the angle of the back, and when I stop, and I'm, I'm done with the angle of the back, right here, now I'm gonna start to look at the relationship of other unconnected points. So, I'm going to look from the armpit, right there, down, and I'm finding what that angle relationship is between where the back ends and where the armpit is. So these points are otherwise not connected by anything, but by relating them, I'm getting the proportion of the figure correct. So it's difficult to see any of that happening when I'm going really fast, uh, but that's what I do the entire time. And you can see I keep moving my pencil um, over toward the model, which is off to the left and you can't see and then back because I'm making all these comparisons. And theoretically, if you get all the angles and relationships between these points right, it'll be accurate and you won't have to do any measuring. Tip number two is to divide light and shadow into closed shapes. The important part here is closed shapes because usually people are uh, aware that you need to look for shadows and you need to look for lights, but what I see people do a lot of the time is they will do a little bit of shading over here and a little bit of shading over there, like just kind of using a pencil or a charcoal or something to put in unconnected splotches of shading and that's not what we want if we want to create solid form on something so what I want you to start to do now is to outline your shadow shapes look for closed shapes that you could draw a line all the way around and come back to your origin point and it would be closed bonus points if you can connect all the shadows in the, in the entire figure together somehow. So for example, you can go here from the eye socket all the way down the shadow on the face, the shadow on the neck, the shadow that goes across the shoulders, all the way down the back, to the hips, to the leg, and you can also connect the shadow that's on the arm to the torso and through that little line, you can connect it to the shadow on the back too. So the more you have just a single large identifiable solid shape on your figure, the more that's gonna be giving the eye information about what direction things are facing, and that is what is going to give you depth and form in your drawings. Moving on to tip number three, look for darker areas in the shadows before you make half tones or look for lights. Often I will see that people want to go in and put in some reflected light in the shadow and they start erasing, but what you really wanna do is first look for darker areas in the shadow. If you start erasing or putting white into the shadow, you're going to be destroying the form that you made back when you isolated those shadows into closed shapes. And you don't wanna do that. You wanna keep everything on the shadow side darker than everything on the light side. 
Similarly, if you start throwing in halftone when you don't have a lot of depth in your shadow, the shadow is going to start to look just like the halftone, or the halftone is going to start to look just like the shadow, and again, you're destroying the form. So looking for darker areas in the shadow before moving on to adding lights um, and before moving on to adding uh, half tones is what's going to help you maintain the integrity of your light logic and therefore your form. If you're not quite sure where to look in these shadows for darker areas, find anything that's a cast shadow and a cast shadow is occurring because light is being blocked by an object and go ahead and make that darker first because usually cast shadows are darker and also more crisp than form shadows. So some examples of cast shadows here are the shadow that's by her temple that's being cast by the scarf. There's the shadow along her back that is being also cast by the scarf. And there's a shadow on her torso underneath her arm because the arm is blocking the light. Tip number four is to use mark directions to describe the surface. This is especially helpful in the light side and you can see here that I'm making a whole bunch of different directional marks around that shoulder. What I like to think about here is that every mark is giving the viewer some kind of information. So if we think about the contour edge, the contour edge is telling us, hey, this thing is going this way. And if we look at the shadow edge, that edge is also telling us, hey, this thing is going this way. So what I like to do with the marks that I'm putting in between all those shading marks is I like to do a different description. So if the contour lines are going horizontally, rather than just repeating that information again and again, I like to vary that and maybe go ahead and make those lines more diagonal or more vertical. Uh, that way, you're telling the viewer, this thing is going this way, and it's also going around that way, and it's also curved over here, and it's also coming towards us here, and it's going away from us there. So it gives you a lot more visual information. Final and perhaps most important tip here is to avoid details. Try and stay with basic shapes as much as you can. And I feel a little crazy saying this when at this point my drawing has eyes and a mouth and wrinkles in the scarf and even individual fingers on the hand. But I really try and keep everything to a minimum. So with the eyes, for example, I didn't try and put in eyelashes or an iris or a white of the eye or anything like that. I kept some really basic shapes in there. I'm basically like hinting at what is happening in the eye area. I'm not spelling it out. Notice that I don't have any nostrils. Um, I do have some shading for the upper lip, but I really didn't try and outline them. And I am putting, you know, kind of some detail here in the hand, but I'm really trying to focus on just the planes and how the top of the hand faces one way and on the other side of the knuckles, you start to uh, angle downwards and that gets a little bit of shadow. So try and not think of just putting details on top of your drawing. You know, you started off with a, 
a nice closed shadow shape, nice solid form. And so you just want to continue to think of everything as a series of smaller and smaller planes. Don't, don't get this really nice um, block in with your light and shadow and draw linear details over the top. Continue with the same theme, just smaller and smaller, thinking about the surface, and that's really going to bring you a lot more success than trying to outline tiny little details. You guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found something valuable in this video. And if you did, please do me a favor and give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos in the future. And let me know in the comments below, what are you struggling with most in your figure drawings right now? Thanks and I'll see you again soon.